Thomas was a poet and a harper, and he and his harp were welcome everywhere, from king's court to shepherd's cot. He played for them all, kings and queens who paid him silver and gold and shepherds and peasants who simply gave him food and a fire. And words were his playthings and his servants. And for this reason he was called Thomas the Rhymer. One day he was resting beneath the ale-down tree when he saw a woman riding by. She was dressed all in green and she rode a bone-white horse with silver bells in its mane and tail. He stood, stock still and speechless, staring at her until she smiled and greeted him. And then he said, My lady, I have never seen a woman so fair as you. You are a green and silver flame, and I call all else gray after seeing you. And your voice, it is like, it is like bells tolling beneath the sea. And she smiled at him and said, You, with your silver tongue, you must be Thomas the Rhymer. I have heard of you, man of words. But tell me, are you a man of action also to take what is given you? Ah, beware, Thomas. One kiss, and it's sure of your body I'll be. <laughs> Betide me, weal, betide me, woe. I will take whatever you give me. And they kissed. And he soon discovered what she meant when she said, Sure of your body I'll be. Or so he thought. For when she mounted, she held out her hand to him. And he mounted behind her, and they rode off. And he left his horse behind. And he left his harp behind. It took him a while to come back to himself, and when he did, he realized that for all his travels, he had no idea where he was, he had no idea where he was going, and he had no idea who he was with. Ah, my lady, may I ask, who are you? Ah, Thomas, I am the Queen of Elfland, and I am taking you with me to Fairy. You are the Queen of Elfland, and you are taking me to Fairy. Do you doubt me, Thomas? No matter. You will find out soon enough. And soon they came to a river, and Thomas puzzled over this river, for it was dark and red, and as they rode up to it, he realized, blood, this river is made of, it's all blood. And the queen said, this is the river of the blood of all that's born. And they waded into it, and Thomas was made bloody up to the hips. They rode to the other side, and they came to a crossroads. And the queen said, do you see the path there, broad and well paved, that is the path to hell. Many tread it, thinking it the path to heaven, but that is over there. And see how it is well choked with weeds and briars. Few actually travel it. And do you see yon path that winds among the bright green hills? That is the path to fairy. And that is where I am taking you today. And as they rode to the borders of Fairy, the queen turned to Thomas and said, I would have an oath of you. You may speak to no one but me while you are in Fairy. Why, you would silence the songbird. Why should I speak to no one but you while I am in Fairy? What was it you said to me in mortal lands? Betide me, weal, betide me, woe. I will take whatever you give to me. <sighs> Very well. I will speak to no one but you while I am in fairy. And so he arrived, 
and she gave him elven green clothes to replace his bloody mortal ones, and an elven harp to replace the one he left behind. And so he began his strange stay in the realm of fairy. Some time had passed when the queen came to Thomas and said, Ride with me and bring your harp. She raised up two mounts, one bone white, one nut brown. She took the white and he took the brown and they rode to the borders of fairy. The time has come, Thomas, for you to leave us. You must go back to mortal lands. To go back. To go home. But to leave fairy, why? Because it is time for us to pay the tithe. Every seven years, the evil one takes our best and our brightest, and I am of a mind that he would take you. So you will leave fairy, and you will go either to mortal lands or to hell. Then I will leave fairy, and I will go to mortal lands. I have one final gift for you, Thomas. And she kissed him, full on the lips. I give to you a tongue that cannot lie. What? First the silence, and now this? How shall I make my way at court, or woo women, or even bark it in the marketplace with a tongue that cannot lie? Betide you will, betide you woe. You will take whatever I give you. Go back to mortal lands, Thomas. The horse knows the way. And she rode back to fairy. And he watched her, but she never looked back. And so he went on his way. He crossed the crossroads, the path to hell, the path to heaven, rode on a ways, but it was in the blood of the river of all that's born that he came to grief. The horse tripped, stumbled, and tumbled him off into the full spate of the river. He clutched the harp, gasping and clawing for air, swimming and sinking, sinking and swimming, until finally he actually did reach the far shore. And he lay there, moaning. Oh. Oh. Grief. Oh, pain, is this the day that I will die? And he heard a voice answer him, his own voice. And the voice said, no. Then when shall I die? On the third day after your 70th birthday. And now he knew the day he would die. Very well then, where can I find a horse in mortal lands? Oh, oh, a true tongue that cannot lie. Yes, I cannot lie. And to know the ill that the future can bring, that I can do as well, but to find a horse. To, to do something useful. No, that I cannot do. And so he made his way back to mortal lands, laughing and crying, falling down and getting up. And finally, 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 he made his way to a tavern near the town where he had been born. And the innkeeper came out and said, Welcome, traveler, welcome. Thomas the Rhymer, as I live and breathe. Why, we had given you up for dead, lad, these seven years ago when we found your horse and your harp. My word, look at you. You're covered in blood. What has happened to you and where have you been? I have been in fair, a far away land. And it's tired I am with the travel. I pray you, give me clean clothes, a room, food, and a fire, and I will play for you tomorrow evening. Oh, Thomas, anything for you. And so the innkeeper gave Thomas what he asked for. But the next evening, he had to play. 
He had no other way to earn his keep. And people flocked to that inn to hear him play, for his skill had grown under the weight of silence and fairy. And his friends flocked around as well, full of questions and concern, for he had been gone for seven years. But he avoided all conversation, and when he was done playing, he would take the harp and scuttle back to his room. Well, after a few weeks of this, his friends grew tired of it. They still had many questions. And then one of them had a plan. They sat around Thomas as he played and he sang. And then one of them gave him a glass of wine near the end of his playing. And Thomas, thirsty, sipped the glass of wine while they, they simply talked among themselves of things that had happened in the past seven years, people and places Thomas had known, and Thomas drank the wine. And after he had drunk the wine, he was tired and he could not resist. One word led to the other and soon he was drunk with all the words he had been denied in fairy. Finally, one of his friends was able to ask, Thomas, where is it you've been these past seven years? Oh, I have been in fairy. The queen of fairy took me there. Oh, surely that is, cannot be true, Thomas. Oh, it's true, that is. And it's true, Thomas, as well, from now on, for she gave me a tongue that cannot lie. A silence followed. His friends looked around at anything but Thomas. Ah, said some one of them finally. It's haymaking time. I wonder what the weather would be like. I'm thinking it will be fair. But what will the weather be like? And Thomas said, fair tomorrow and fair the next day, but don't be fooled. It will rain after that. Oh, Thomas, now how could you know about the weather? Oh, it's true, Thomas, I am, I said. A tongue that cannot lie. And it seems I am a prophet as well. Well, they all left soon after that, saying their good nights, but watched the weather like a hawk, I can tell you. And it was just as Thomas said, fair the next two days, but rain after that. And the people were amazed. Now, some of them were shy and afraid of true Thomas, as he was known. But, well, this was the town where he had been born. Most of them had known him as a child, known him for most of his life. So they came to him in their twos and their threes, and then in their tens and their twenties, and they asked their questions, and they asked, and they asked, and they asked, and he answered, and answered, and answered, and finally came the question. Thomas, I am an old man, a sick man, I must know. When shall I die? I have no desire to speak of such things. And that was true. And so his voice made no answer. And the worst has happened. And he had survived. And finally he took matters in hand and said, I will answer your questions on market day only. And if, you ask, if I answer your question, you must pay as if I had harped for you. So the bright shining years passed by. And Thomas, at his 70th birthday, took to his bed, tired and sick, and his friends stood the death watch, for he had told them when he would die. One of his friends got up and looked out the window and said, oh, Thomas, I wish you could see. There are two deer, white deer, a stag and a doe, out in the field near the woods. I wonder where, they, where have they come from, and why are they here? And Thomas answered, they are come from fairy and they are come to take me back. They are come to take me back! 
and his friend turned, but Thomas was dead. But now there were three deer in the fields, the third one a stag, running through the field, through the woods, toward the setting crescent moon. Thank you.